Oh my gosh! Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him, get him, get him! Get him. Yeah. Hey guys, Jack Dice here with Obsessed Fishing and welcome back to another episode in my series of Up and Coming and this was on Kerr Lake in April back in 2019. Now this actual, this tournament took place actually the week after a Kerr Lake tournament that I fished in the Shenandoah division a week prior. So if you want to figure out kind of the, get a lay of the land and what the tournament was going to set up to be like, all you got to do is watch my last video. Kerr Lake runs along the Virginia and North Carolina border. And in April, in that area of the country, it means we're getting really close to the spawn. And a lot of the fish in this event were spawning. Now the water had come up, we'd had some decent rains, and a lot of the bushes that Kerr Lake is famous for were getting water on them. And there's something about those bushes on Kerr Lake that just are magnetic to fish. If they can get on them, they will get on them. And with the water being up, and it being around the time of the spawn, I knew coming into the tournament that we were gonna be close to that. So coming into it, I had had the experience of doing well the week prior, and so I tried to expand on the stuff that I'd found then, rechecked some of the areas and looked into new areas, and tried to follow the fish that I had found a week prior. And practice was pretty good, they were clear they were biting, and I was shaking off fish all over the lake. But again, my key with the Kerr Lake is that I'm looking for a bigger bite, and generally for me, I find that on the lower end of the lake. And so I spent a lot of time down there trying to figure out how I could catch five fish down there, that would weigh a better average than other places in the lake for me. And so the last day of practice, I rolled into a good area, shook off some fish, rolled up into another pocket that had some uh, bushes on it, shook off some more fish, and I just bounced around that afternoon and actually shook off a ton of fish right before the tournament. So going into the event, I knew that there were a lot of fish gonna be caught. The fish were biting super, super well. And I knew that a lot of these fish were probably locked on beds. Unfortunately, we had a lot of cloud cover, a lot of rain, so you couldn't see the fish most of the time, but they were there nonetheless and the bushes were pinpointing them. So I knew everyone was gonna catch them and I knew the fishing was gonna be really good in my mind, but it was about getting, for me, it was about how could I get a better bite and the only way that I knew that was to cover more water, try to fish more bushes and more pieces of high percentage places to get a bite than anyone else. And so going into the tournament day one, that's what I was looking for. Four more, be quiet. I'm always glad of that because that means I'm not zeroing. That's all I When I start the day, that's what I look for. So morning finally comes, the tournament's getting ready to start. I get down there and get down to the launch and we had a torrential downpour actually that morning at takeoff. In fact, it was so heavy and the storms were so bad that they actually delayed takeoff. It was kind of miserable. You were freezing cold, it, rain was pouring down and we're just sitting there. There wasn't anywhere really to go to get shelter. So, but I was trying to think ahead of like, okay, how's this gonna affect fish? I decided to go with kind of the same game plan I went with the week before. I'm gonna start really close to takeoff by this bridge see if I can pick up a couple fish really fast and right off the bat that's exactly what happened and so I've got two fish really fast and then I'd shaken a lot of fish off in the creek the fish that I had caught the week prior that were on this bridge some of them had actually started to move back into the creek to spawn so I went in there and I figure alright this is gonna keep going great but I get around the corner of the bridge 
and the water is just blown out muddy. It was amazing how fast that water had gone from clean, that, that torrential, torrential downpour we had, the water's muddy. Suddenly it's chocolate milk, fresh mud, and fresh mud is never a good thing really when you're fishing. You can handle muddy water, particularly if the fish are shallow and the time of year is okay where it's not freezing cold, but when it's fresh mud, it's cold mud, it really, really hurts those fish. In my mind I thought, maybe some of these fish that we're gonna spawn, they're probably gonna stay locked on. And so I've tried to fish through it for a while and I caught a few, one little one, but it just was not happening. So I decided to run back out and up the lake a little bit to some of the pockets that had a few bushes in them that I chicken fish off in. And I roll into the, go to roll into the first pocket. And again, it's that time of year, there's fishermen everywhere, tournaments everywhere. And I'll go into the pocket and there's a guy there. And so I turn around and just leave and I say, where, where can I go? I thought of a place where I'd shaken one fish off. So I run over there to this one little cut. And there's this one little bush that was under the water. And when I got there, you couldn't even see it. It was like the water had stained up on that bank and it was muddy too. But I knew where it was and I threw my little wacky worm in there and it loaded up. Oh my gosh! Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him, get him! Oh my gosh! Oh. That was almost a nightmare and got hung on the rod, the net, the everything. Oh. Oh. That was a pet. I know it wasn't your fault that she just got hung on that and then he got hung on the... That's a miracle that he stayed for it. Oh my gosh. Oh, thank you, dude. And I set the hook and instantly it was stuck. It was not moving, but I felt those head shakes. I knew the fish was on there. The fish had gotten caught in the bush that I couldn't see underwater. I'm like, uh-oh, this is a disaster. So I grabbed the tell the cone to get the net. So I'm just holding pressure. I'm trolling up to the fish and he comes free. And the fish, I start reeling, it comes up and it is a big one. It's a four or five pounder. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is the one I need. He comes up, comes up right next to the boat, and I tell the co to get the net. And he goes to stab the net at the fish, and the net catches on the boat cleat, and it's stuck. And I don't know, I'm just, I'm like, dude, get him, get him, get him. It's right there, at the, the fish is right flopping right next to the boat, and he's just sitting there with the net. And the net, the, the mesh of the net snags on the hook. And so now this four or five pounder is stuck shaking on the outside of the net with the hook stuck in the net and that is like worst nightmare scenario that is the typical time when you do use a net you've seen it plenty of times people when the hooks get tangled in the net that fish is usually like goner and I just reacted the only thing I could do I dropped down grabbed the fish by the mouth and hoisted him into the boat it was really a miracle catch, and it was a big one. It was my biggest of the day, a four or five pounder <laughs> to get started when I didn't have a limit, and I'd been struggling a little bit. My areas hadn't worked. Finally, turned it around. It was a good sign. It was like, okay, things can still happen. Oh, 
is right. That just took the weight off my shoulders, dude. <laughs> I'm free now. All right, I gotta put him in. Yeah, now I just need a few big ones. Big one. ones. I got one, you got five. Time two. Hey, we're doing good. What time is it? I just had a curiosity. It is 9.45. That ain't bad, we got a big one already. Just need a couple more to go with it. us a few. I don't think he caught any of them in here. Alright, so let's beam him up. I thought he had it the first time. Kind of surprised I didn't hook him the first time. Lifting it out of the water and one hit me right there. He wasn't but about probably 12 inches. Ah, oh, dang I saw, I, I had him bite, but I didn't know the other day, but I didn't know how big he was. And so it's about midday at this point. We've, I stayed on the lower end and I've stuck it out here this whole time. And at this point, I have a little bit of decision making in my mind. I knew some creeks way up the lake. I'd shaken off a bunch of fish up there. But it, to me, it was clear the fishing was getting right and there were fish biting everywhere on the lake. And to me, it didn't seem prudent to waste run time running all the way up to lake to fish that are biting, to leave fish that were already biting. So I said, you know what, we're gonna fish, just keep fishing around here and try to upgrade. And that's what I did throughout the afternoon. Caught a bunch of fish, but they really didn't help me that much. I had a good, my first five fish were pretty good. But so I decided to finally, you know what, I'm gonna expand and I'm gonna go look for new water. And I roll back into this creek near the end of the day and there's one, there's a few bushes and they're really shallow, but there's one bigger willow bush sticking out in the middle of the pocket. It's a little bit deeper. I said, that's the one. And I troll up to it and I fire my wacky worm right up, skip it way up under the tree. I lift up and it's tight. And I set the hook and it comes out and it's a good one. I fight it all the way, no hiccups this time. My coinger nets it beautifully. We get him in the boat. And that was my big call right at the end of the day to finish out my tournament. So, went back to weigh in, was, was excited, had a good day, caught a decent number of fish, but I could just smell it in the air, it was springtime. You knew that the fish had bit. You knew that, it, like, you knew that everyone had caught them. There wasn't a doubt in my mind that everyone was gonna have a good bag. Ugh. Well guys, I don't know how much I got on camera or how good the footage is considering it was really wet and there's fog in the lens and it probably looks terrible but uh finished the day caught five caught a good one that was a wreck um caught my five fish pretty early then fished all day caught a bunch more keepers but not nothing that really helped until late in the day caught one more that helped a good bit and so we'll see it's five decent fish but i'm assuming everyone caught them it's the time of year it's disappointing you come to come to the scales you, you feel good you're like Oh, I got all these fish, but I just feel terrible because I, I'm always like, man, they're always, this time of year, you know they wrecked them. 
you know, and when it's tough out and you catch five, you're so satisfied, so happy. But here, it's just like, during this time, you're just like, man, it's never enough. You just gotta keep catching, keep catching. I was hoping, I was like, well, this might be enough to get a check, but we'll see. Take it up to weigh in, drop it on the scales. I was really surprised. Those fish ended up weighing 17 pounds and change, almost 18 pounds. I honestly had no idea that they weighed that much. I really underestimated them. That I weighed in near the end of the weigh-in, and so I was think I was sitting in third when I weighed in, and when it was all said and done, that's where I ended up, third place. I was one ounce out of second place, so that one kind of stung, but I was up like a pound and a half out of winning, so I, I really wasn't, I didn't have any opportunities to win, really. I had a good day, and really, despite all the catastrophes, I pretty much capitalized on every bite that I could have. And so all in all, looking back on this tournament, I think I made pretty much all good moves. Um, there really are none that I regret. I caught them early, and when, I, when my area was blown out, I didn't spin out. I just looked around and tried to find the clear water and made it work and didn't leave the area of the lake that had the bigger fish when it slowed down. And I, it's, it paid off with a really big cull at the end that I think helped me a lot. Yeah, it was a pretty much a... As much as I want to say a, a flawless tournament, I have almost no regrets. I don't really can't couldn't think of anything that I really looking back, I was like, man, I wish I would have done that. Other than possibly slow down a little bit more, knowing that those fish were spawning. And also there were a few times where I made a decision to run back to an area that I'd either already fished over or had already seen instead of in going and expanding and fishing even more new water, which I think would have given me a better opportunity to have a bigger bag. All in all, third place, I couldn't be happier. It's the first tournament of the Piedmont division, so it was a great start to trying to eventually, possibly, in my mind, I'm always looking at Angler of the Year. In the BFLs in 2019, the BFL for first place in Angler of the Year is $3,000, which I had won the year prior, so I was hungry to win it again and prove myself again. And so third place was gonna give me a lot of points towards possibly winning that title again. And so, all in all, great tournament, can't complain. So thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Obsessed Fishing and Up and Coming. God bless the tight lines. We'll see you next time. Please say it recorded. <gasps> it did. Wow.